join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hi, this is Krishnan. I'll be doing the Hindu newspaper analysis for the day. So these are the five topics that we'll be seeing. Let us go to the topic directly. So this article is about uh, how compared to last year, the amount that is going to be spent on the Mandrega scheme has reduced. So I hope uh, all of you know what uh, Mandrega scheme is. We have, we have already covered it in depth. In fact, we've seen uh, even the nitty gritties of it. So here, uh, we will not go into the nitty gritties of uh, Mandrega. We are just going to tell what are the positive impacts it has done over the years. So what has it done? Reduced poverty via off-season employment. So what do you mean by off-season? You know how agriculture works, right? For the first six months you will have job and for the next six months you will not have job. So at that time, what uh, people, these agricultural laborers, what work they will do? They can't be unemployed, right? So they need to have some employment. So what this M Mandrega did? It gave them employment. So because of employment, what happened? Poverty got reduced. Next thing, it improved household consumption of poor people. How it improved consumption of poor people? Because since they have money, there will be demand. And uh, because there is demand, they will go and buy in the shops. So when they go and buy in the shops, when they spend money, consumption takes place. So here we are telling improved household consumption of poor people. And next, act as insurance during monsoon defensive season. So what does this mean? If there is monsoon deficit, there will not be proper uh, agricultural season. If there is no agricultural season, no work. So what will happen? People will not have enough money. So what this Mandrika did, it acted as insurance during the monsoon deficit season. So you know in India, right, uh, the entire country is dependent on monsoon. So if monsoon fails, uh, the economy fails and there will be protest and all those things. So if the monsoon fails, what will happen? Mandrega, it acted as an insurance. Next, greater food security. So here we are just telling, if people have money, they'll be able to buy food. So that is what we are trying to tell. So and this is the most important thing. So what happened during pandemic, a lot of men were working in urban areas, right? In the cities, in metropolitan places and things like that. What happened? They went back to rural areas. So what uh, this Mandrega was able to do was, it was able to observe these men into the rural workforce. So, because of that, they were able to save themselves from poverty. So, during pandemic also, Mandrega played a huge role. Next. But what is happening, since Mandrega is fully, the expenditure for Mandrega is fully paid by the center, what the center is doing now is, it is seeing this scheme as a fiscal burden. Why we, sh we should give all the money for Mandrega? Because uh, it is uh, putting a hole in the pocket. So, they are seeing as a fiscal burden, they are not, do they are not giving... Uh, push for the scheme with a lot of enthusiasm. So this is what this audit editorial is telling. So the gov central government is seeing this scheme as fiscal burden. But however, you should know there is one type of problem with Mandrega. That is what they generally do is, they will not, uh, Mandrega is for asset creation, right? But generally they will do road construction that also sometimes they will not do properly. Canal irrigation they will do. But uh, it will not be done properly. So what the editorial is telling is, you try to broad base the type of work that you will uh, give in Mandrega. So that link not just do these works, do other works also. Next is what are the other issues with the scheme? This is a very serious issue. Wage delay and underfunding. So what is wage delay? Uh, let's say January you are working. You will get your salary in April, May only. Sometimes you will not get during that time also. So they will delay it. So that problem is there. Underfunding is, let's say, it will take 500 crores for a month. What the central government will give only 300, 350 crores to the center at that point of time. So these are the issues that are going on. So what happened led to depress the demand. So people generally what they did, see if the government itself not interested to do the schemes properly, what they also lost interest. So what will happen is in Mandrega, you will have to go and you will have to ask for work. So if people are uh, not asking for work, they will not give work. But now people are not seeking work. Why? Because even if they go, Wages they are not giving properly. So those issues are there. And what has happened recently, they had introduced other based payments. They thought this will be a game changer, but what it has done, it has done nothing. It has neither reduced corruption, it has neither delayed uh, 
I mean, it has neither uh, addressed the problem of delayed wage payments. So those things are also still there. And what is happening? It has created hurdles for workers and officials. What does the hurdle means? For example, if father asks you fingerprint based uh, attendance, what will happen? Old people, you know, they will not have proper fingerprints, right? So the authorization will not happen. So this is also creating unnecessary problems. So now the Union Rural Development Minister says uh, we cannot give 100% money for uh, a Mandrega scheme. So what should happen? State should also give 40% contribution. But uh, he's telling, why is this telling is if states give uh, 40%, they'll be more vigilant towards corruption because you know in Mandrega a lot of scam corruptions take, corruptions take place. Uh, let's say 100 rupees you get, 10 rupees you'll have to give for the person who's giving you the money. So this, those issues are still there in the Mandrika scheme. So the minister is telling only if states give some money, they'll make sure these type of corruptions at the lower level is not happening. But uh, what the problem is already because of GST, a lot of states are uh, having fund crunch. So if you're telling 40% for Mandrika, uh, the states only should pay, it will be a great burden for states. And what will happen? Poorer states cannot afford it. So finally, the editorial is telling, uh, Mandrega is like a dignified thing for uh, poor people. It is about their right to work. So the editorial is telling, don't play with those things. You can empower poor people only through schemes like Mandrega. So they are telling, be very uh, sincere about this scheme. This is what uh, this scheme is about. I hope you understood this article. Let us move to the next article. This article is about the uh, social security expenditure comparison, comparing what the central government has done and what Rajasthan is doing. So this is a comparative analysis. So why is this in news? Because uh, recently budget was uh, uh, released, right? So it had a lot of cuts in various uh, social security and welfare schemes like food security, Mandrega, as in severe cuts as in in terms of expenditure. So what will happen? There are a lot of elderly people and you know vulnerable, marginalized people uh, in the society right so they will not get money so because of this they will be pushed to destitution they will become extremely poor they will become homeless so this is a very serious news because uh, a lot of people are dependent on the state uh, for their uh, social security and things like that so we will see uh, what is happening so I hope most of you must have heard about the national social assistance program so in that what will happen it is a centrally sponsored scheme. So what is a centrally sponsored scheme? That is 60 is to 40. And if it is Himalayan state or it is a special category state, it is 90 is to 10. So 60% state central will give 40% by the 40% by the state. And 90 is to 10 in the for the Himalayan states. So so in the national social assistance program what they will have they will have 200 rupees for the elderly and 300 rupees per month for windows and persons with disability so uh, okay initially you might you might say okay 200 rupees for the elderly and 300 rupees per month for uh, windows and persons but what they have not changed this at all how did they come to this uh, how did they prepare this list that also it is based on the 2001 census you see how old it is and the BPL list that they uh, came up with, right? That is also a lot of scholars and activists, they do not accept this BPL list. So 2001 census, it is 2023, still they are following 2001 census. And the BPL list also is not a very good BPL list. So and since they are only paying 200 rupees and 300 rupees, the budget of social uh, assistance programs is, is constant. But if you adjust it to inflation, it is in real terms, it is going down only, no? So it is reducing over the course of years and what has happened in fact this year the social assistant assistance program they have reduced to 16 crores. So this is one of the most important schemes but that they are reducing it has come down by 16 crores. So what Rajasthan is doing this is a very important thing. So recently if you if you have seen the budget of uh, Rajasthan so the, the chief minister has proposed this so he's going to come up with minimum income guarantee and pension law. So this is going to be enacted, enacted in the state. Through that, what will happen? Rural and urban employment guarantee for 125 days. So not just rural, for both rural and urban and it is 125 days. So and rupees 1000 per month and this is adjusted to, this will be adjusted to inflation because automatic increase of 15% per annum. So 
uh, you know this is what uh, while while central government is reducing social assistance program expenditure states like rajasthan are coming up with something like this so as i told you national social assistance program it is a centrally sponsored i hope you understood what centrally sponsored is so we'll see what is non contributory income security so what is non contributory what is contributory let's say when you uh, retire you will get pension amount right but it is contributory because during the course of your work itself every month you will contribute some amount of money to your uh, towards your pension corpus right but this is a non contributory income security that is you don't have to give money at all once you reach a certain age you will start getting money so that is non contributory income sec- income security and one more thing it is given only to elderly people widows and persons with disability people who are below the poverty line not just for every uh, elderly widow and uh, pwd person you should be B- bpl below poverty line so there are three main schemes under this program so one is for old age one is for widows and one is for people with disabilities so this is very important scheme but uh, what has happened from last year from 0.58 it has come down to 0.21 so social security itself in india is a very uh, huge thing so that they are reducing so from 0.58% it has come down to 0.21% and we saw right uh, this is a centrally sponsored scheme so what the center is doing is it is forcing states to pay uh, more money so even it is 60s to 40 uh, central government is not releasing money at the right time so what is happening states are forced to do spend more money on this social assistance scheme so see we see we'll see how rajasthan and what they are doing so so rajasthan what it is doing it has its own list so through this own list it is covering 90 lakh people why what happened because the nsap it is covering only 10 lakh people what only if you if only 10 lakh people get social assistance what will happen to others so what rajasthan did it has come up with the new list and through that what it is happening it is covering 90 lakh people and uh, so because it is covering more people their spending is expected to go up to 11500 crores and we we seen that right, what are the other problems this national social assistance it is not indexed to inflation that is why what they gave in 2000 that they are still giving so that bpl list is old one the census also 2001 census see but what happened from 2007 to 2023 193.19% the inflation has grown but before they gave 200 right that only they are giving now also what was 200 in 2007 should have become 586 rupees but it still continues to be 200 rupees but at the same time you compare with this this dearness allowance right for central government employees alone is 12000 crores which is 30% more than the total expenditure on social security pensions so i hope you understand so this is not adjusted to inflation so how much the inflation has risen close to 193 percentage how will you calculate this 200% in 2007 should have become 580 rupees now but uh, the government has is not changing the rate, um, uh, the allowance that it is that it is giving but it is it is it is reluctant to give only to it is reluctant to give money only to these people because you see the central government employee dearness allowance for that alone they are spending 12000 crores and this 12000 crore is 30% more than the amount that they will be spending on uh, social security pensions so we'll see the how the eligible criteria eligibility criteria also varies so you see for the central government it is based on 2001 census and a disabled person if he or she should get pension they should have more than 80% disability so that is very uh, high uh, cut off right so 80% so but what uh, what rajasthan government has done men just have to be 58 above women just have to be above 55 and if they are below be poverty line they'll get and widows with adult children also eligible so if you are a widow and if you have children uh, central government says children will protect you but rajasthan what is telling even if you have adult ch- even if you have a adult child you'll still get pension and disability from 80% they have brought it down to 40%. So if you are 40% disabled, you are eligible for this. Earlier you'll have to be 80% disabled. So because of this uh, uh you know uh, liberal cut off what has happened 90 lakh beneficiaries are there in Rajasthan for just uh, this has this social assistance program alone. So this is this is a good thing, right? While central government is reducing the 
amount it is it will be spending on social expenditure rajasthan is increasing it so this is a good thing so what uh, the author is telling you for this for, is telling for the central government is telling credible entitlement is telling what people will get what they will not get that you tell clearly uh, if you are if you have all these disabilities you will get this if you don't have you will not get this so credibly you you tell what they are entitled to so that is telling strength and accountability so you generally know in schemes like uh, the social assistance and all there a lot of uh, corruption both at the high level and low level so they are telling strength and accountability and they they are telling give legal protection so if for a month you do not get money or if the uh, allowance is coming down a person should be able to go to the court so telling in the act itself you bring legal protection and next is telling universal and non contributory minimum monthly pension so it should be universal that is everybody should be eligible and it should be non contributory that is once i reach that age i should be able to get the money i will not go and contribute money so things like this will help all these road side vendors uh, you know people who are in the marginal marginals of the society so and they are telling this pension should be 50% of the minimum wage so before they retired how much they were earning for a day that should be the how much they were earning for a month that should be the 50% of it should be the minimum wage so this is what uh, the author is telling so he is telling only if you give all this these people will be able to re- to to live a life of dignity or else they will have to go beg borrow steal at, uh, at you know after 60 for for an elderly person to go and do this or for a disabled person or for a widow to do this it is not uh, leading a life with uh, dignity right so the author is author is telling so this is how you go about it so people are supposed to live a life of uh, you know a dignified life so you're telling if you do all these things they can lead a dignified life i hope you understood this article let us move on to the next article this article is about uh, pangolins and how they are still being poached and trafficked so it is only increasing in india in the last 5 years so why is it in news because uh, world pangolin day today is world pangolin day and uh, you know traffic right it's a non profit organization so so they are telling in indian pangolins close to 1203 pangolins were found in illegal trade so so you see this organization this ngo traffic keep this in mind so they are telling 1203 pangolins were found in illegal trade so who is stopping it odisha is stopping the list followed by maharashtra so uh, in odisha they seized a lot of uh, pangolins and in 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 the seizures 50% were live pangolins so they were alive so they were rescued alive and 40% were scales you know this this can you see the scales so these are uh, made of keratinins so they are the only mammals with these uh, scales made of keratinins so uh, so you know take note of all these things so wh- what are pangolins they are ant eaters scaly mammals so only mammals with this feature okay so keep that in mind scaly mammals so what is the what is the feature they have keratinin keratinin so they are nocturnal i hope you understand what nocturnal is they are uh, awake during the night and they sleep in the morning so nocturnal pretty much like us upsc students so so they are nocturnal and what is their diet it is ants and termites and there are two types indian pangolin and chinese pangolin indian pangolin and chinese pangolin both are found in india so keep that in mind and uh, indian pangolin they live uh, throughout india except in arid region and uh, high himalayas and in northeast they are not found so in northeast what uh, pangolins are found chinese pangolins are found so that you keep in mind this indian pangolin what is its iucn status it is just endangered so chinese pangolin eastern and northeastern part of india they are found they are critically endangered so what is their uh, problem they are they are hunted poaching why because in chinese traditional traditional medicine it is said they have certain uh, uh, medicinal features like uh, it, it improves your masculinity and things like that so they are being hunt, hunted and poached for these things but they are not uh, scientifically proven they do not enhance anything they are just keratins so they cannot cure they do not have medicinal power nothing is there but still people are hunting and poaching it so this is it in this what you should know they are the only mammals with 
keratinin as their uh, scales so and uh, this you should know the difference between indian pango indian pangolin and chinese pangolin the difference that you should know that's it that's all about it let us move on to the next article this article is telling globally there is going to be slowdown only or they are telling they are unsure about it there might be slowdown or they might not be slowdown but india is going to be decoupled from global trends so this is what they are telling so even if there is a global slowdown india will not be affected by it because india is not connected to it this is what this article is trying to tell so why is it in news because the rbi recently released their bulletin so in that what it is saying so indian economy would decouple from the uncertain global economic slowdown so this is a good news so so what it is telling how india can keep growing amid global slowdown because globally there is slowdown but how india will keep uh, improving because there is strong domestic consumption uh, so they are very positive about it one more reason why there will be domestic consumption is because of the tax exemptions uh, that uh, was given in the budget so because of that 35000 crores will go back to households so this 35000 crores the households will use it for domestic consumption so because of this there will be economic growth next is broadening credit dis- disbursement so banks are uh, again willing to give credit because of this also economic growth will be there and because of uh, good growth prospects in agriculture and allied activities it is agriculture and allied activities are going on well so in this sector also there will be investment so this is what this rbi bulletin is uh, telling and it is uh, very hopeful of uh, economic growth because budget 2023 it emphasized on capital expenditure right so we saw right they are going to uh, do uh, large scale uh, expenditure in infrastructure and things like that so because of that this will crowd in private investment what is crowd in private investment private players will uh, get money for credit and they will invest so this is crowding in private investment so because of this job creation if there is job there will be money if there is money there will be increase the demand so this is what it is so uh, for the prelims point of view you should know what is crowding in and crowding out so crowding is uh, when there is increase in private investment due to increase in public investment so when the government is uh, uh, investing more so when there is uh, in infrastructure products and things like that private will also invest what is crowding out uh, let's say if the if the banks are going and uh, i mean if uh, if uh, the government is going and borrowing from uh, bank all the money government will take right so the private will not have any money to borrow from bank so because of that private participation will not be there so the private will not be able to invest so that is crowding out investment so this is what i have written here a situation when as a increased interest rates lead to a reduction in private investment so why increased in interest rates because all the uh, money that is there government will take right so because of that interest rates will go up and uh, Uh, because of the increased interest rate private will not be able to get affordable credit and because of that they will not be able to spend so this is what crowding in and crowding out is so let us move on to the next article this article is about uh, you know supreme court not uh, entertaining the sealed cover suggestions so which actually means the uh, the petitioners uh, they filed a case in supreme court uh, asking the court to look, look into irregularities uh, i mean the accusations that are leveled against uh, adani group so you are all aware with uh, uh, you know aware about what's happening in the adani episode right so so the petitioner uh, is asking the supreme court to look into uh, the hidden bug research report so the government uh, has given a sealed cover and it, in the sealed cover it had information about uh, the committee it has formed and what is going to happen but the but the chief justice said i will not entertain the sealed cover it should be transparent uh, you know we can't just keep everything in a closed sealed thing it has to be in the public domain it has to be in open space because then only people will be confident about the indian economy indian market or else investors will lose confidence right so the chief justice had said something like this and it's a very uh, good thing so what happened supreme court supreme court chose transparent transparency over government sealed cover so this is important so this is why why uh, he did it to protect investor confidence so so why is this in news because the uh, adani group was accused of short selling and other major phone place uh, so basically uh, this short selling this is actually not a, a major crime in many countries in fact uh, you see here uh, it, in all major uh, jurisdiction instead of prohibiting a short 
short sales uh, so regulators they actually permit uh, uh, short sale so short sale is uh, short selling is uh, about uh, buying and selling uh, uh, shares uh, you buy it at a certain fixed price and then you sell it at a high price and the difference and the difference between both the high and low price is how you make profit so short selling is uh, actually in india it's uh, foul play but uh, generally if you see in many countries it is not uh, outlawed that is it is not illegal so why it is not illegal because sometimes it helps improve liquidity and if sometimes if the stocks are overvalued they help price correction but some people say no 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 you should not do short uh, short selling because uh, you know it is vulnerable to manipulation so there are two sides uh, people take two sides when it comes to short selling but this is the but this is the case against uh, adani so this is what you should know you should know uh, these things so with this we'll go to the prelims practice question so we saw about pangolins right so i took a question from pangolins with reference to pangolins which of the following statement is incorrect so you see this incorrect so chinese and indian pangolins are critical uh, pangolin conservation status is critically endangered they are the most trafficked mammal in the world they are the only known mammals with large productive keratin scale covering the skin they are widely distributed in india so which one is incorrect this one is incorrect because indian pangolins are not critically endangered indian pangolins are only endangered they are not critically endangered so others are other three options are right so the national social assistance program is a central sponsored scheme of the government of india administered by which of the following ministries so you we discussed this right this is it is the ministry of rural development so they do it so mains practice question write in brief about the mandrega scheme and elaborate on the socio economic role of the scheme and the role it played during pandemic we discussed this so write in brief about the mandrega scheme it is a 100 day uh, scheme uh, every for every day work you do you are given close to 120 140 rupees and uh, and what you you will be involved in asset creation agricultural work irrigation canal road construction and things like that and what are the socio economic role they play they prevent uh, people from falling into poverty uh, it reduces hunger insurance against uh, monsoon failure all those things we discussed there right you write all those things and what is the role it played during pandemic because during pandemic all men who were working in urban areas they came back to their rural areas and mandrega was able to absorb the uh <clears throat> men also into work and because of that uh, because of the mandrega work they were able to get money because of that during covid times these people did not fall into hunger and unemployment so these things you will have to write so you will have to have a body intro body and conclusion so this is what it is about uh, so this is all about today's uh, discussion i hope you understood it uh, if you like our work please uh, like comment share and subscribe you can also follow us on youtube instagram telegram and Facebook that's all for today I'll meet you again thank you